On this episode, it's a trip of firsts for our three dogs. The first attempt at living on a boat, the first time walking the streets of Tampa, the first visit to a marina, and the first time being left on the boat in the marina as we take a trip to swim with the gentle giants of the sea. Join us as we navigate the charming streets, savor the local flavor, and let loose some three dog chaos in the heart of Tampa. Let's go. This is where I'm supposed to say, so we sold everything, ditched the nine to five, traded our Labrador for a life jacket, and sailed off into the sunset. Turns out we're kind of attached to our Labrador, and our Doodle, and yes, even this temperamental poodle. Join us on this journey as we navigate our version of the American dream, and maybe inspire you to chase yours. Our goal is to spend next summer in the Bahamas, but first we needed a few practice trips. So we headed east, out the Caloosahatchee River, past the power plants. We made our way past downtown Fort Myers and then past Cape Coral, eventually turning north between Pine Island and Sanibel, continuing on the ICW. We cut to open water between Cay Acosta and Boca Grande, ignoring the autopilot's guidance, steering clear of any shoaling. We couldn't resist stopping to test our luck fishing. We didn't catch much, but I still think we're pretty lucky. Continuing our journey, we headed towards Tampa Bay, once again choosing our own path versus the route suggested by the autopilot. We were surprised how much further we still had to go after entering the Tampa Bay. As we got closer to the city, the dogs were intrigued by the large cruise ships. I just tried to stay out of their way. We had reached downtown Tampa, and so we headed straight to the marina. Docking was easy, and we found ourselves in the heart of the city. We made it, and in the scope of life, maybe this isn't all that big of a deal, but for our family, it felt like the start of something new. After a day on the water, with so many new sights, sounds, and smells, the dogs were beat. It was time to turn out the lights and get ready for tomorrow. It's our first morning in the marina. We forgot the dog bowls, so we had to improvise a little. Yes. Ow, where did you do that? Shoot, you okay? You gotta be careful running around on here. There are stuff that can hurt you. I got a hole in my pants now. Did you rip your pants too? There was always activity on the waterfront. This is good or bad depending on your disposition. It meant for our dogs that they were going to have to learn to not bark at everything that went by. One of the benefits of visiting Tampa for us is that my younger brother lives there, so our niece got to come hang out for a few days. There was a Starbucks at the marina, and we couldn't help but take advantage. Of course, our pups thought they would try to take advantage as well. Now I know what you're thinking. Why are these people just sitting around and filming their dogs and this bad behavior? Let me explain. This is Yogi. He's an eight-year-old chocolate lab and the oldest of our three dogs. He's been around boating his entire life, but it still gives him a bit of anxiety from time to time. Like all labs, he's intelligent, affectionate, and easygoing. Except when it comes to food. Then, he's a maniac. As a puppy, Yogi loved to counter surf. I mean, it was out of control. And he was really good at it. So he had an idea. What if we caught him in the act and sent that in to AFV? That island is stain resistant, but it's not chocolate lab resistant.
And the winner of the $10,000 in tonight's Funniest Home video is... Canine Counterintelligence sent in by the Cullison family from Alba, Florida. That's right, our dog's bad behavior gave us $10,000 and we got to meet Carlton. Hello, congratulations! Hi. Yes! So please tell me how y'all got this video, because it really looks like a setup. Well, he's he kept stealing the food, and we knew he was doing it, so we decided we'd catch him in the act. Right, yeah. okay. So you put the camera there, you yeah. put a great breakfast. <laughs> that was her choice. That was her choice. Yes. yes, and you know, and he was a puppy then, right? Yes. Yeah. Right, so he was able to figure out how to get, you know, work his arms and get the food. Um, does he still do this? He's eating like a whole ham off the counter. <laughs> That's your fault. <laughs> You know his skills. Once you videotaped it, you were clear yes. on what happens. Well, you know what? Congratulations. He just got you $10,000. And, and a chance at $100,000. Yeah, I like her face right there. You, you're very happy about that, right? Yes, yes. Congratulations, guys. We didn't win the $100,000, but we still let the bad behavior slide from time to time because, well, you just never know. After our morning on the boat, it was finally time to get out and explore the city. Come on, bud. First stop, what else? Lunch. We'd heard about a local place called Sparkman's Wharf, so we set out with the entire crew in search of some delicious food and local vibes. All right, Karen, you know where we're going? I'm a little confused. finding out that Tampa is a very dog-friendly city. Oh, that's me. Sparkman's Wharf is a foodie hotspot. Think of a bunch of permanent food trucks all in one place. From seafood to mind-blowing tacos to Asian favorites and sweet treats, there was something for everyone. Thanks, waitress. It's March, but that means it's still pretty warm in Southwest Florida. So next we headed to a spot where we heard the pups could cool off. Come here, Ivy. Come here. The kids loved it. The dogs, not so much. Hi, buddy. <laughs> no. Hi. What do you think, Yogi? Go with Karen. Go on. Let's go. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> At home, we live on a couple of acres, so the dogs are used to running free when it comes to potty breaks. Oh, now. There's a lot more distractions in the city, which wasn't a problem for Yogi, who seemed to be able to potty on demand. Doing here. But for the younger two, it was proving to be a major challenge. After one more stop for hydration, it was time to head back to our floating home away from home. It was amazing how quickly the dogs learned which boat was ours and which ones weren't. We loved our sunsets on the Tampa waterfront. You never knew where the conversations would go. I'm still scared of Kennedy, are you? Yes. See? Are you taping that? I wish I did. Come here, Yogi. Come here, Ivy. Come on. Come here. Yogi. Yogi. Hey. I'm right here. Come on. Come on. He's scared to go up there. Come on, Ivy. 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 Come on,
Come on, Ivy. Come on, Ivy. Let's go. Come on. Come on, Ivy. Let's go. Come on. Come on, Ivy. 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 Come
and we found a variety of parks, plazas, and scenic spots for the dogs to stretch their legs. Our pups are really starting to get the hang of this dog park stuff, discovering the joy of running and playing in these open spaces. While making progress, they're still learning how to play well with others. After a fun time at the park, it was time for lunch at Armature Works, a food lover's paradise in a restored old historic building at the end of our walk. After a quick stop for supplies at Publix for the trip home and another potty break, we settled in for our final night in Tampa. After a fun-filled week in Tampa, it was time to head home. Our plans are to cruise the crystal clear waters of the Bahamas, but we've discovered these shorter trips hold a charm of their own. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for joining us on this journey. This is episode two of our first venture into this format as we learn to both cruise on a catamaran with three dogs and learn how to share our experience with you. Recently, I was doing an interval run. I used the Nike Run Club app and the coach asked a question. He said, four down, how many to go? Well, 10 minus four is six, right? No, he said, the correct answer is one. There's always just one interval to go. Our dogs on this trip didn't know where we were headed, how long we'd stay, when or even if we would return home. They simply embraced the present, enjoying this one interval with the people they love. They didn't dwell on the past or worry about the future. They lived in the now. We're not entirely sure what this channel will become, whether it's a boating channel, an adventure vlog, or a haven for dog lovers. What we know is we were inspired by other channels, and so we hope to do likewise with ours. If you're enjoying this channel, please consider subscribing, or giving us a like, or maybe dropping an encouraging comment. And be sure to join us on our next episode as we attempt to make the most of our next interval as we anchor up off-grid in the stunning 10,000 islands. 